You know how in horror movies the danger is always something dramatic? A monster. A killer. Whatever. Well, Utah has something worse. I'm not being metaphorical here. You are standing on what used to be the shore of the Great Salt Lake, except now you are a mile from the actual water. A full mile. And the ground you are standing on, that dried up lake bed, is basically toxic waste. Every time the wind blows, and it blows a lot in Utah, it picks up clouds of arsenic, lead, mercury, and sends them right into Salt Lake City. Two and a half million people breathing in poison. Right now, today. You want to know what's really messed up? Everyone saw this coming. Scientists have been screaming about it for 20 years. But nobody wanted to hear that their precious lake was dying. Now it's not dying anymore. It's at 4,191.8 feet above sea level as of January 2025 way below its historic average of 4,200 feet. The lake hit its all-time low of 4,188.5 feet in November 2022, and it's taking the whole state with it. Here's the thing nobody talks about. The Great Salt Lake isn't just some tourist attraction where people float around taking Instagram photos. This lake literally controls Utah's weather. It creates snow. Yeah, you heard that right. That greatest snow on earth Utah brags about? That comes from the lake. Lake effect snow, they call it. The lake extends Utah's ski season by five to seven weeks and causes up to 10% of the snow in the Cottonwood Canyons. Moisture evaporates from the lake, hits the mountains, boom, powder for the ski resorts. Except here's the problem. The lake has lost two thirds of its surface area in 40 years, two thirds. We're talking about a lake that used to cover 3,300 square miles at its historic high in 1986, now covering barely half that. You know what happens when you lose that much water? You don't get snow anymore. And those ski resorts? That's a $1.6 billion industry. Each inch of snowfall is worth $2.8 million to Utah. Gone. Just gone. But wait, it gets so much worse. Remember when I mentioned the poison? Let me tell you exactly what we're talking about here. For about a hundred years, all the mining runoff, all the industrial waste, all the agricultural chemicals, they all flowed into the Great Salt Lake. And that was fine when it was covered with water. But now, now we have 800 square miles of exposed lake bed, poison, just sitting there waiting for a stiff breeze. They tested the dust. You know what they found? Arsenic levels exceeding the EPA residential regional screening levels. Lead, mercury, copper, manganese, iron, all at levels that are known to be extremely irritating to lungs. And this is not in some remote corner of Utah. This is blowing straight into Salt Lake City, into Ogden, into Provo. Kids are playing soccer while breathing in heavy metals. Think about that for a second. You know what arsenic does to kids? It affects their development. Lead is a concern for developmental reasons too. We are talking about an entire generation of Utah children getting exposed to neurotoxins because nobody wanted to save a lake. Here's where it gets really dark. The lake is not just drying up from drought. Oh no, that would be too simple. See, the lake needs 2.4 million acre feet of water per year to stay healthy. You know how much it is getting? About 700,000 acre feet, according to recent research. The rest gets diverted for agriculture, for lawns, for golf courses golf courses, in the desert, while a toxic lake bed poisons children. And here is the kicker, alfalfa. About 68% of Utah's water diversions go to alfalfa and hay. That is 3.5 million acre feet of water, not even food for humans, cattle feed. And get this, about 29% of Utah's hay harvest by value gets exported overseas, with two thirds going to China. Some estimates say 17% of all cattle feed from the Great Salt Lake Basin gets exported internationally, primarily to China and the Middle East. So Utah is poisoning itself to feed cows in other countries. You cannot make this stuff up. The state government knows all this. They knew for years. You know what they did? They passed some bills, spent about a billion dollars on conservation measures. But that was like putting a band-aid on a severed artery. Meanwhile, the lake keeps shrinking, the poison keeps blowing, and the clock keeps ticking. Because here is the thing about ecological collapse. It is not linear. It is exponential. Once you hit a certain point, everything accelerates. 
and the Great Salt Lake? Scientists say it is about 18 months away from what they call a terminal lake event. That is when the salinity gets so high that the ecosystem completely collapses. Let me paint what is coming. First, the lake effect snow stops completely. Snowpack is already down 40% in some areas. No snow means no water for the summer. No water means the lake drops even faster. Then the dust storms really start. Not the little ones we are seeing now. I am talking about massive walls of dust. Except these are not just dust. They are poison. Imagine a wall of arsenic and lead rolling through downtown Salt Lake City. Hospitals are already seeing it. Emergency room visits for respiratory issues are up 25% in recent years. And that is just the beginning. Wait until those heavy metals really start accumulating in people's bodies. The health impacts experts are worried about include cancer, neurological disorders, and birth defects. But here is the really sick part, property values. You think anyone is going to buy a house in the poison zone? There is about $300 billion in property value at risk. Real estate along the Wasatch Front, all of it at risk. Who is going to buy a house where your kids get exposed to toxic dust from playing in the backyard? And the birds. Jesus, I haven't even talked about the birds. The Great Salt Lake supports 10 million migratory birds. Pelicans, plovers, sandpipers. You know where they go when the lake dies? Nowhere. They just die too. We're watching an entire ecosystem collapse in real time. And everyone's just pretending it's not happening. You want to know the really twisted part. They could fix this. Not easily, but they could. A BYU study said it would take 2.5 million acre feet per year minimum to stabilize the lake. Stop diverting the water. Buy out some of the alfalfa farms. Researchers say cutting cattle feed crops by a minimum of 50% is needed. Let the rivers flow to the lake. It would cost maybe $100 million a year for a decade to compensate farmers. That's nothing compared to what's coming. But they won't. You know why? because the farmers have water rights from the 1800s. Senior water rights, they call them. It means they get their water no matter what, even if it means poisoning an entire state, even if it means economic collapse. They get their water. The lawsuits are already starting. People suing because their kids got sick from the dust. Businesses suing because the lake killed tourism. But here's the thing about lawsuits. They some say it will take years. The lake does not have years. Scientists say it may have three years, maybe less. There is the Aral Sea. It used to be the fourth largest saline lake in the world. Under the Soviet Union, water was diverted for cotton farming. Now it is a poison desert. The towns around it are ghost towns. Child mortality skyrocketed. Respiratory illnesses increased including drug-resistant tuberculosis. Cancer rates rose dramatically. Birth defects became so common, authorities stopped tracking them. That is Utah's future. That is where this is heading. Some scientists are already calling the Great Salt Lake the American Aral Sea. And just like the Aral Sea, once it hits that terminal point, there is no coming back. You cannot restart a dead ecosystem. It is done forever. Then Utah becomes uninhabitable. I am not exaggerating. The combination of no snow for water, poison dust everywhere, and economic collapse from the ski industry dying and property values crashing is unsurvivable. We are talking mass migration. Millions of people fleeing Utah like it is a disaster zone. Because that is what it will be. The military is already concerned. Hill Air Force Base has been mentioned as potentially needing to relocate if conditions get bad enough. When the Air Force starts thinking about leaving, you know it is serious. Salt Lake City gets about 15 dust storms a year now. 15 years ago, there were none. Zero. And every one of those storms is carrying poison from decades of industrial waste that accumulated in the lake bed. The governor keeps saying they are working on it. They even held statewide prayers for rain. After the prayers, it was the driest year on record at the time. But here is what really gets me. Everyone is acting surprised. Like, how did this happen? It happened because for 50 years, Utah sold water rights to anyone with money. 
built cities in the desert, told everyone to come on down, the water's fine. Except the water was never fine, it was borrowed. And now the bills do. You know what else? The dust problem is actually worse than people realize. Only about 9% of the exposed lake bed is currently emitting dust because most of it has a natural hardened crust. But as that crust breaks down over time, more and more of that toxic lake bed becomes active dust sources. And every day they wait, every day they argue about water rights and property values and agricultural economics, the lake gets smaller. The poison spreads wider. More kids breathe in arsenic. This isn't some far-off climate disaster. This is happening right now, today. While you're watching this, wind is blowing poison into nurseries, into schools, into hospitals. The Great Salt Lake isn't giving Utah a warning anymore. The warnings were 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago. This is the end. This is what collapse looks like. Not dramatic. Not sudden. Just a slow, poisonous death that everyone watches happen because fixing it would cost too much money. Except not fixing it. That's going to cost everything. The entire state of Utah, basically, yun, inhabitable. Three million people with nowhere to go. An economy destroyed. An ecosystem extinct. All for some alfalfa to feed cows in China. If you live in Utah, if you're thinking about moving to Utah, if you know anyone in Utah, understand this. The Great Salt Lake is already in crisis. We're just watching the consequences unfold. And when it's done, it's taking the whole state with it. This isn't a warning. It's an obituary. And nobody wants to admit it.